Well, I think over the last uh, couple hundred years, uh, since the beginning of really uh, formal schooling, um, we've operated on a warehouse model, and so has museums. That is to say that we think of education and museum learning and other things as being giving people some information, facts, things they ought to know, things that we think they ought to know, uh, and they're going to put this in their sort of mental warehouse and keep it. And someday, when they need to know it, they will then reach into their warehouse, warehouse or up to their mental shelf, and they'll take it off their mental shelf and they'll use it. Um, and that depended on people being curious and having large uh, amounts of information they're carrying around in their head. It's really no longer possible to do that. And, and in fact, in commerce, warehouses are gone. What we have is a just-in-time system. When you need to know it, you go to find it. So that we find that uh, when we ask people what they use uh, the internet for, if they're going to go to a restaurant, they, they go online and get a map. You don't have a shelf of maps. It used to be we had books of maps. Now you can hardly find anybody who has a book of maps. Uh, we used to have telephone directories to look up numbers. Now we go online and look up a number. Um, we get information as we need it, as we think we want it, and so forth. So that it's, it is a fundamental change, just as fundamental as Gutenberg's uh, printing press. And it's going to change the way, knowing how people find out about things. But even when they're trying to understand a complexity, they really want to know what climate change means. They go to the web, they try to find articles, they look at things, they find little, they see a snippet on the evening news saying, we really have too much carbon in our atmosphere, so they wonder about that, and they go try to figure out what that means. So, it is a just-in-time system, not just for finding factoids, but for really trying to find understanding. And I think that it really fundamentally reshapes the way that we should think about education, formally and informally. Uh, because uh, if people are going to, to go get information as they wish it, then it changes them. It also offers an opportunity for us, what I would call a teachable moment. When someone comes to you and says, I'm really worried about the flu, and I want to know about what I can do to avoid the flu, you might actually have a chance, in addition to answering your short-term question, to, to have them start to learn a little bit about a virus, a little bit of how viruses uh, move and transfer and what they do to your body, uh, so they could actually come out of it with some science understanding that they wouldn't have had when they started. But they ask you about the flu, because that's what they really want to know. And you have to always make sure you answer that question, because that's why they ask you. But in addition to that question, it gives you a chance to say some additional things that they may not have asked you, but which you think they ought to know anyway. And if you do it in a strategically and diplomatically appropriate way, uh, it will work, I think. Uh, but it will change the way I think that museums ought to think about themselves.